So from your knowledge of your own behavior as a human, you can apply that to tracking other humans on how you would respond to different situations of indecisiveness and solving a problem. Damn sandy areas are some of the best places to go to learn how to track whether to follow the sign or whether to do track interpretation. I'm at a state park beach today. There's a lot of interference tracks on the beach, but I'm wearing some running shoes that have some distinct tread on them. In 2006, I was living in southeastern Virginia, probably about an hour away from Virginia Beach in a rural community. And I was going to go away for three months on deployment. And right at that time, there was a contractor building a house on either side of me. And he didn't have electricity or running water or anything. He had to run a generator and bring in the water. So I needed somebody to mow my grass while I was gone for three months. And he needed access to water. So we made an agreement to where they could use the hose to mix up the concrete and clean the tools, whatever else he needed for that. And in turn, he would pay somebody to mow my yard. So three months go by. I'm happy to be home. When I went inside my house, I saw that there were different uh, circuit breakers had been tripped, which I thought was kind of odd because the only thing that I had agreed to for these guys to use was just, you know, the hose. So being on a well, the only thing that really would have tripped would have been the well pump. And that was fine. But it was one of the plugins on the outside porch. And so I thought, okay, that's, yeah, that's kind of odd because I didn't give these guys permission to plug in. And there shouldn't have really been anything using much electricity other than a refrigerator, which was still running as well. So one thing with tracking is it's not just looking at the ground. When you're in the woods, you're looking at different sign, hair, scat, broken branches. When you're in uh, areas of people, you look around, okay, it's kind of like a detective scene. You kind of put two and two together. It's like solving a mystery. Okay, so the breaker out front, that's been tripped with somebody plugging stuff in. So I went back outside and that part of Virginia, the soil is very sandy. And so I went out and I was, I was looking around a bit and I started seeing some tracks. And the tracks were of, I could tell it was a big dude. And I followed them and they went up to my wooden fence. And then they went one way and went another way because I saw that one of the boards on the fence was broken too. So backtrack and following everything through, come to find out, this guy walked up and he was a heavy dude. Never seen him before, but I could just tell from the tracks. He was a heavy dude and he went, rather than walking an extra 50 feet to get around my fence, he was kind of going back and forth and decided to climb over, which was harder than just walking the extra 50 feet, busted one of the boards and then just ended up going through never told me never told the contractor so i ended up calling the contractor up and i told him the whole story i said hey breaker's been tricked you tripped your guys have been plugging in using their power tools on my uh on my property all i gave you permission to was to use the hose that was it nothing else i said you had a big dude probably six foot something very heavy set walked on there walked relayed the whole story to him kind of, you know, falling through kind of like Aragorn and Lord of the Rings when he was tracking the hobbits and just, you know, and I said, any climb near my fence broke that. And there was just this long pause. And then the contractor just started apologizing and he ended up writing me a check for $300. And at the time I didn't have any security cameras, but after figuring all that out with tracking, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to ask one of the neighbors further down the road that's within sight of my property if he saw anything. And it was the one that they had paid to come out and mow. I said, hey, was there a dude, you know, six foot something coming out and this and that? And, and the guy said, oh, yeah, yeah, there was a guy on, on your property there. He didn't see him break the fence, but he saw the guy on the property when they um, when they were there before. So that was confirmed before I called the contractor. How can one determine the size of a person just from reading the tracks? A number of different methods people do. Sometimes they'll measure stride. So you can see the track here. I wore the running shoes that have pretty good tread on them. So you're just going to look for the tread here. Now, I'm 5'9", so it's kind of hard for me to replicate somebody that's over 6 foot. But stride is one of the ways that you can determine it. However, depending on how fast someone's going, sometimes people just take short steps. I, my stride tends to be a lot shorter just because I walk, tend to walk slow. When you're moving fast, your stride's going to be longer. So. That's not always a 100% thing. You can go off of shoe size. Some people have really small feet. Some people have, you know, 
very big feet and they're not that tall. I'm, you know, so that's not always 100% as well. Now, the thing with tracking is things aren't always 100%, but when you do try to combine different things like the stride and the shoe size, you can come up with a pretty good idea of the size of the person. Another thing that you can use is looking at the splaying of the feet. So what I mean by that is, are their toes pointed straight ahead or are they out to the side? Usually if somebody's heavy set, their toes are going to be pointing outward at an angle. Also too, if somebody's carrying something, their toes tend to spread out at an angle as well. So if you see the feet angled out like that, it could be a heavy person or it could be somebody just carrying something really heavy. Now, looking at stride, looking at the shoe size, looking at the toes splayed out, Okay, I kind of determined all that. All right, this is probably somebody that is tall and they're heavy set. And you just kind of look at the overall picture of it. So each track is pointed out. So there's consistency there. You guys see how it rained earlier this morning and the track looks like it's drier where I had stepped. So that's one of the ways that you can do track aging and also just it makes it easier to follow sign. Now as we move closer to the water, there's less interference tracks, so it's easier to see now the pattern. You can see the toes pointed outward. And just for demonstration purposes, let's pretend that the water is the fence. When the guy got to the edge of the fence, I had to start cluster tracking. Basically, there were just a lot of tracks overlapping over top of each other, so I had to look at the general pattern. And what that showed me was there was indecision. He had stopped, looked around, kept pacing in one spot, and then he changed direction and moved over to the right. And then he got to the right, and then he stopped. The guy walked down the fence a bit to the right, and then he ended up stopping. Now, nine times out of 10, how you know somebody stopped is what's called a T-step. And animals do this too. Basically, see how the tracks are right beside each other. Most times, that's what it means. Now, if you're mid-stride, something startles you, somebody yells, freeze, you may stop mid-stride. But in general, this is what you look for. After that, he turned, went back a couple steps, and then he stood at the fence. Indecisive again, there was a lot of cluster tracks. And right there, I kind of drug my foot just to mimic the busted board there it was he climbed over tracking people can be a lot easier than tracking animals because as humans we know how most other humans do think in most situations and so you just kind of take that puzzle and you try to piece it together on what would you do in that situation and so when you walk up and you see the busted board fence and you see the different tracks and kind of determine the size of the person and then just start at the beginning piece it through like solving a mystery and it's fun especially whenever you can freak out the contractor and then he, he pays you 300 bucks